In the previous uh, videos, we have seen the detailed structure of human eye. Now we will talk of the structure of retina, the layer which is responsible for perception of the stimulus of light and vision. So structure of retina. Now when we talk of this retina, we are talking about the optical part. When we saw the structure, we said there is an optical part of retina, there is a ciliary part and an iridal part. So here we are talking about the structure of that optical part. There are main four layers in a case of retina. Cells are arranged in four layers and we are going outside in. That means we are talking of, suppose this is the eye, eyeball and if this is choroid then we are talking about the layer. So the cells which are outermost they are the pigment layer cells and they have these protoplasmic processes. So these are pigment cells and as the name tells us pigment cells they have this melanin pigment. And that is why they are called pigment cells. This layer is of pigment cells. The pigment is melanin and the cells are cuboidal with these projections which are known as microvilli. Now here these microvilli are for collection of more and more light. The next layer which is there, this is the pigment layer. The next layer is actually made up of the photosensitive cells. So the second layer is of photosensitive cells. And photosensitive cells are two, that is rod cells and cone cells. We are writing it like this because we will discuss these cells in detail. So photoreceptors, two types of cells, rod cells and cone cells. And the names which are given to these cells is basically because of the shape that they have. The rod cells, they are rod-like, little longish. And cone cells have a little broader one end and that is why they have this cone-like appearance. So these are rod cells. The cone cells are somewhat broad like this. So we can see the difference in the shape. And so there is this name which is given to these cells. That is rod cells and cone cells. So this is, these are the cone cells that we are talking about. So the blue ones which we have written here, are the cone cells and the red one that we have drawn are the rod cells. Now shape rod cells are straight rod like and cone cells they are slightly conical that's why the name. Now rod cells they have a pigment which is known as rhodopsin. And rod cells are responsible for scotopic vision. Scotopic vision term is given to the vision which helps us see things in dim light. So this is basically vision during night vision what we can call it. And when we use the term night we are not talking about pitch dark. We are talking about when the light is slightly less and we can call it dim light vision or twilight vision also. And rod cells are also responsible for black and white vision. So the black and white part is actually under the control of rod cells. Now before we take up the function how they work, we will draw all four layers and then we will come to the function. This rhodopsin is also known as visual purple. The pigment is called visual purple. 
Cone cells, the shape is conical. They are responsible for photopic vision. Photopic vision is bright light vision and color vision. So they help in bright light vision and color vision. Cone cells also have a pigment and this pigment is known as iodopsin or visual violet. Visual violet. So rhodopsin is known as visual purple and iodopsin is known as visual violet. How these cells work that we will see in some time. Let us draw other layers. So the third layer is of bipolar ganglia. Next layer is of bipolar neurons we can say. Now these neurons they are going to make synapses with the fibers which are arising from these nerves and the next layer. So if we draw these cells as a neuron here are the dendrites and this is the exon. So these are the cells they are bipolar and so these cells and these are the exons. So this is the dendrite and this arm is the exon. So exon is going to make synapse with the fourth layer. So they are bipolar neurons and they make synapses with the photosensitive cells and the last layer. Now the last layer is of ganglionic cells. They are called retinal ganglionic cells. Their dendrites make synapses with the exons of bipolar. So if we draw those, these are also neurons. So if we draw these neurons, they would make synapse here. So if this is the neuron, the dendrite of this neuron is making a synapse with the exon of the bipolar neuron. So they all make synapses here and their exons ultimately join to form the optic nerve. So this is optic nerve and this optic nerve is formed by joining of exons of these retinal ganglionic cells. So exons of these cells, they form the optic nerve. So these are the four main types of cells which are present in retina. We'll write two more types of cells, but the four layers, the pigment layer and the pigment is melanin. These cells are cuboidal with protoplasmic processes, which we call microvilli. Their function is to absorb the light. Rod cells, cone cells, we have written rod cells are responsible for dim light vision or black and white vision. Cone cells are for color vision. The third layer is of bipolar neurons. The dendrites of the bipolar neuron are connected to the photosensitive cell and the exons make synapse with the dendrites of the fourth layer. And the exons of these neurons, they form the optic nerve. This is how the retinal layers are arranged. There are two more types of cells which are there. And these cells are known as horizontal cells and amicrine cells. These two cells, they are actually helping in collection of the uh, stimulus. Now, the location. Horizontal cells are present between the photosensitive cells and the bipolar. That means here there would be these horizontal cells. So what horizontal cells are going to do? They are going to collect the stimulus from various rod cells and cone cells and then pass it on to 
the bipolar neurons. So basically they are helping in gathering collection or convergence of those stimuli. And amacrine cells are present between bipolar and ganglionic. Their function is again the same. They would collect information from all these bipolar and will pass it on to this. So they are actually working in a horizontal or lateral uh, direction. So these two additional cells are there. But photosensitive, uh, sorry, pigment cells, rod cells, cone cells, bipolar neurons and ganglionic neurons. These are the four main cells and four main layers. Now coming to these uh, rod cells and cone cells. How do these cells work? Rhodopsin, that is the visual purple, it undergoes bleaching in presence of light. So when light falls on rhodopsin, it undergoes bleaching and there are two uh, substances which are formed. One is known as scotopsin and the other one is retinal. This retinal is responsible or it causes depolarization of the rod cells. And we know depolarization means the stimulus is generated. So retinal causes depolarization. And this is responsible for generation of stimulus. And then it will come to the second next layer that is third in this case bipolar then ganglionic and finally it will go through the optic nerve. During night time this rhodopsin is regenerated. That means these two substances would combine and form rhodopsin. But this is going to happen during night time. So light is essential for stimulation to be generated because in presence of light only this rhodopsin will undergo bleaching and retinal would be formed the substance which is required for generation of that stimulus now cone cells are responsible for color vision and there are three types of cone cells that we have i'm just shifting these words so that we get space these are bipolar neurons and these are retinal ganglionic cells. Cone cells are of three types. The cells which are sensitive to green are known as chlorolaps. The ones which are sensitive to blue are called cyanolaps. And the ones which are sensitive to red are called erythrolaps and I have used those specific colors so that it is easier to remember which type of wavelength stimulates them. So chlorolaps are stimulated by green, cyanolaps by blue and erythrolaps by the red. Human eyes are most sensitive to green. Most sensitive to green. Now, color vision, whenever we talk of color vision, primates like human beings, apes, monkeys, some of the monkeys and birds, they are the main animals who have color vision. Most of the domestic animals, sharks, they do not have color vision. So, color vision is totally dependent on the cone cells. So when we say there are animals who do not have color vision, then the cone cells are not there. Plus, the animals which are nocturnal, like owls, these birds, these owls, they are uh, nocturnal. That means they move around during night. As they do not see color, because in, uh, in darkness or in night, color cannot be detected. Color can be detected only when this visual spectrum with gear is available. So animals like owls, they have mostly rod cells in their retina, very few cone cells or cone cells may just be absent. The animals which have color vision, they would have rod as well as cone cells. So these animals, depending upon what type of uh, 
lifestyle they exhibit, they would have different types of cells in their retina. We are able to see in dim light also as well as we have color vision. So we have pretty much equal number of rod cells and cone cells. So these two are the most important cells which help us see things. Rod cells, we know that this pigment, if is absent or deficiency of rhodopsin, causes night blindness. Deficiency causes night blindness. So these pigments are very essential for us to see in dim light as well as in color uh, or color vision when the light is available in plenty.